Marrying somebody from the Philippines, is it worth the sacrifices? Um, one of the things I will say is a lot of people don't even think about it. Um, and there's, a, there's like a stereotype of like, oh, the guy must be a loser, can't get somebody in their own country, blah, blah, blah. A lot of it is absolute rubbish. The fact is the majority of people are divorced, which meant they were with somebody in the first place. Somebody looking for a new type of lifestyle. People are just traveling. People that just randomly meet people on the internet, or somebody that's quite simply just looking to find a lifelong partner with a bit more of a traditional relationship. Um, now, the sacrifice point is a lot of the guys move to the Philippines but don't actually plan on doing anything else. They, they are there long term. Um, and sometimes they don't even tell the partner that's what they got planned. The partner's thinking, I'm off to Miami or whatever. Um, yet it's actually moving to the Philippines, not moving from the Philippines. And this is one of the things that becomes a bit of an issue if you don't bring it up before you eventually walk down the aisle. Uh, the other thing is marriage. Do you really want to marry somebody from the Philippines? Do you really want to marry anybody? I mean, a lot of guys got divorced and are well and truly burned and no interest in losing any more assets. Um, so do they want to get married and these are the sort of things you should be having a conversation around now just simply talking about the fact you don't want to get married the, or if you do want to get married there's no rush the, see from a Filipino point of view there is always a push for marriage and settling down they've got their house they've got their old um, view of what's been drummed into them about the Christian life and what have you, uh, the happy home and the children, all that sort of stuff. But at the same time, there is no depth to it. You know, I find that some people haven't even thought about the person that they're with. They're just quite happy just to go along with things. But at some point, they just hit a brick wall and suddenly go, I'm not happy. Um, this is why these things need to be discussed in the first place. The, the sacrifice in this is that your partner may be just saying yes to everything you want because her view is so fixated on this marriage and everything else to keep the family happy that she hasn't even thought about herself, but she will at some point. The other thing is the, the second life, which is another thing that comes up in the Philippines. Second life is when the, a guy marries a younger partner. The younger partner is just seeing that you're going to eventually die. And then they'll have their life because obviously they picked up your pension as a widow or whatever. Um, and then they'll start again and do what they want to do. That's another thing that a lot of people don't even think about or discuss. But that is a sacrifice. They're willing to sacrifice a period of time to be with you. But they're hoping, well, sorry, not hoping. They know, <laughs> they may not be hoping, but maybe they will, that you're not going to be there at some point. And then they can start their life in their 40s or whatever and do what they want to do because uh, your cash flow has got to assist with that. Um, having kids, kids can be expensive in the Philippines. A lot of people say they're not, but, um, you know, if you want your kids to have a better life than the average Filipino, they're going to have to be invested in education, medical and giving them a kickstart in life. You know, this is why a lot of the guys like myself are back in Europe is the priority is the family, which is the next generation, which is the kids. And a lot of guys I've spoken to over the years don't even think about it. And at the same time, many do, but there is a, a percentage that actually just go, uh, well, they're happy in the Philippines. Where I'm thinking, well, they may be happy in the Philippines, but they could be a doctor, engineer, or whatever, but the life there is not fantastic compared to what they could do if they were a doctor in the West, for example. So, going to Europe, get them educated in Europe, European passports, etc., opens the floodgates of opportunity. So that's, that's another thing, because a lot of people don't even think about having children, and then end up with children. Um, I think the guy is from the Netherlands where the doctor had been giving his wife a placebo um, as birth control uh, that disappeared shortly after her pregnancy, funny enough. Um, probably still at the same hospital. They just like, if Mr. Such and Such calls, I've left. Um, so be aware of those sort of things. Uh, cost of living increases. Um, the Philippines has been going up in 
year on year in cost of living with inflation and also um, you've got the devaluation of the dollar, the euro, the sterling, um, which does have an effect when anybody that relies on an offshore income, because when it's a localized income, you don't really notice it. But when you're transferring money monthly, etc., you can see the differences, and it can be 30% a year. Um, and that's something you've got to factor into your budget. That's why I always recommend trying to build a 30% income within your uh, local life so that you can offset that in some form. Um, family issues. Having people come into your house and they expect to eat dinner every time they turn up is pretty normal in the Philippines. In the same way, when you're out, a lot of people may ex expect you're going to pick up the tab. Now, I don't really have those issues with my wife's family. But at the same time, I know people that really grumble about it. And I do say to them, well, just don't pay the bill. Simple as that. You only have to do it once. And uh, you'll find the brother-in-law, etc., etc., suddenly has a bit of a fit because he's got to find the money that he's, he's drank and ate through, expecting you to pick the tab up. There is no need for you to be paying all this stuff out. You're not bought into that culture. Right? Going to the Philippines doesn't mean you have to absorb everything. If you're getting married or in a relationship with somebody from the Philippines, it's 50-50. It's your culture plus their culture. Not, well, you just have to do as we say because that's the way it is. Well, to hell with that. Because the only reason you're saying that is because you already know it's wrong. You already know that, you know, having 10 people come around for dinner, expecting to eat out every time we go into a restaurant or picking up little Johnny's um, school fees and stuff for your sister that's got 12 kids already. It, that is not the Westerners' problem. They were never their problem in the first place. They're not connected to them. Although you're married, you're not marrying the entire family. And some people say, well, you marry the entire family. No, you don't. You don't have to. There's no, but you know, when you go through your marriage contract, can you tell me where that says that in there? Because that's got nothing to do with it. It's just beneficial to those that want to sponge off you. Don't buy into it. And some of the things that are worth doing is putting some sample businesses out there where somebody wants to work for money and if they fail at it, you gave them the opportunity. And then, you know, a lot of these, these little things you sort of write off as, a lesson learned, but also it's a good excuse to say, well, I gave you money last time and you lost it all. I'm never giving you any money again. Job done, all oh, gone. Um, yeah, so the family can be an issue sometimes. Some people recommend moving miles away from family. Personally, I don't think that's correct in all situations. Um, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, fantastic people, for example, uh, it's been very beneficial for the kids to be close to their their relatives. So the, the point is, it's not always like that. Sometimes I can see it where the woman's manipulative or naive, easily manipulated by family or whatever. Then moving 200 miles away could be beneficial. But you, often it's much better to deal with this stuff head on just to get rid of it. You know, at the end of the day, they may hate you for the next six months, but guess what? Who cares? You know, they, if they're not uh, responsible enough to see that you are not an ATM, then you're better off without. Um, what other issues? The visa issues can be a nightmare going to the West, especially to the UK these days. They're making it more more difficult. Even with the right criteria, there's delays. Um, I think this Brexit thing is actually helping make this a slower process, and that's something you've got to bear in mind. Um, it's not always easy to just go there, marry somebody, and bring them back to the West. Yeah, maybe in the 80s, <laughs> but not, not, not since the influx of immigrants from all over the place expected a free ride in other economies. Um, big changes there in recent years. Um, the culture difference can be an issue as well. Um, 
I was talking to my wife about it this morning. Well, she brought it up about because we were sitting eating two different meals, although they're very similar because I don't have rice on mine, but my wife's having rice with her breakfast. Um, the fact that some of the guys get sick and tired of rice and they're thinking the same stuff for every meal. This is because you are accepting their culture, but they haven't accepted or bothered to engage with yours, where they should actually be meeting you halfway. You know, at the end of the day, you don't write one rice every day, but you don't mind it a couple of times a week. If they want it three times a day, fine. But at the same time, if you want steak, you get steak. You want chips, you get chips. You want potato, you get potato. At the end of the day, it's got to be met halfway all the time. And it takes time to get this stuff right. But you need to communicate to get the message across. Because some of these people um, I've met couldn't care less. As long as they've got their little bubble, they don't care what their husbands are doing. Um, it's a little bit strange. I do find it strange, and I do find it strange that the husbands were moaning me, but I'm like, go speak to your wife, she's only over there. You just say you don't want any more rice for the next two months. And they'll have to adapt because they've got to find something for you to eat. You know, it's the same, I, I eat some Filipino food, but majority of it, I don't. I'm not a fan of dried fish. I'm not a fan of, uh, well, a lot of sardines, white rice. I'm, it's not something that's part of my stable diet. But at the same time, I understand that some people, that's their diet, but I have my own. You've got to meet halfway. You know, at the same time, I don't expect them to eat what I'm eating unless they want to. I don't force them to eat it. In the same way, your wife shouldn't be forcing you to eat a Filipino diet because she can't be bothered to learn to cook anything else. She's got to adapt and change. Now, a lot of these things you have to do in the Philippines, but it's much easier to do. Because um, they can find people that have already got a Western diet and learn how to cook and stuff like that. Because there's a lot of people that also can't cook at all. And I, I find it really bizarre, but then again, I have friends in the UK that can't cook. Cooking involves pressing digits on a microwave in a little frozen box. It doesn't actually involve ingredients. <laughs> well, E numbers. E, e numbers, ingredients? I'm not sure. But they, the point is, they're not used to cooking a normal meal. So it's a bit of a culture change on that. Because in the Philippines, I have never seen a frozen meal. It's all been food that we prepared. You know, like when we have uh, chili con carne or something, we take it from the mincemeat and make it. Um, it's not from a tin or anything. We actually make all the stuff. So that can be a bit of a culture change from people coming from the West because a lot of the stuff is not so ready meal. Um, and you do have to put a bit more effort into the preparing of food. Um, but beyond that, I think you just got to prepare yourself that there is cultural changes. Don't let things annoy you or frustrate you because at the end of the day, it's a different culture. Just because it's different in the West doesn't mean the West is right and they're wrong. It just often has a different logic to it. Um, I've seen it with people from the Philippines, Indonesia, India, Pakistan, some of the stuff you're going, why are you doing that? But there's a logic in their head that is completely different to yours. And then if you said it to somebody else that's from the same country, they'll go, oh yeah, yeah, because it makes sense to them as well. Um, just let it go over your head, don't worry about it, and just deal with your own stuff. Um, the Philippines can be noisy, it can be dusty, um, people can be a bit selfish beyond their their little house, you know, like tipping rubbish in the neighbor's house because uh, an empty lot, um, burning rubbish in the neighboring lot and all that sort of stuff. Within theirs, they, they like to look after it, and beyond that, they couldn't give it rats, whatever. Um, but I also see it sometimes in Spain. You know, people look, you know, look after their gardens or whatever, but then they take the dog to go and crap in the street. Um, it's something within that culture. Um, and I'm not sure if Spain got it. Yeah, I'm not sure the Philippines got it from Spain um, or whether it's something that's already in the Philippines. I have no idea because um, obviously the Philippines wasn't as populated before. So... Um, a lot changed after World War II, should we say. It was, it was very, very different prior to that. 
But anyway, I hope you found this interesting and useful. And oh, that was one final one religion. Uh, somebody was asking me this yesterday about, in fact, I'll do a second video on religion. That's, a, that's an interesting topic. Thanks for watching.